my today's discussion is about a student's doubt which he posted in one of our group and the question was around the one way action and two way action in slabs so the primary question was why all slabs are given as one way in sight which i have explained in this entire video in addition to that there are general questions that a beginner get confused with regarding the ly by lx ratios the e line theory behavior and so on hi everyone this is premjit here from civilera.com and today's video is a dedicated video that i made for a structural group where i engage with students on a day to day basis so in case if you want to join that group or in case if you want to ask me any question i recommend you to follow me on youtube as well as like the video and also join our email webinar and workshop list in www.civilera.com in case if you are keen on reading our blogs and content please visit www.civilera.com/blog and you will find tons of content that will be useful for your structural understanding so our discussion started today when there was a question on ly by lx ratio and uh, the question was why don't we see such a case in case of residential building now i am not sure what residential building you have seen this but everywhere if you are designing it yes if you are going by the e line theory ly by lx one way and two way do exist even in residential buildings and it's not right to say that if you consider only one way action it is economic no it won't be yeah it may be easy for people to do some things but then it may not be economic at all now let us just quickly discuss what one way is yeah so as somebody just now told if you have beams only on two sides yeah then there is no question the load can go only in this direction so it is one way yeah let it be even a uh, long span say for example you have a beam like this and say your slab like this and your beam is um, here on this side yeah you have a beam a column maybe whatever yeah i'm just drawing for the sake of it now here this is a long span but still this is going to be one way in this direction absolutely there is no question because there is no possibility of a support there so there is no point in discussing that at all it's one way we are only talking about beams uh, slabs which has supports on all the four sides so let us now take and understand why this all things are coming up in our discussions or in our textbooks so let me assume one particular slab like this and let me draw the beams around that assume that this is your uh, slab assume you have columns or whatever yeah so let me draw a column a rectangular column you have here something like this yeah so let me also mark the span so let me assume this to be 3 and this to be 6.05 yeah so now 6.05 divided by 3 is more than 2 and therefore it is a one way slab as per your textbooks and the load goes in this direction yeah some students have mentioned about curvature deflection things like that and it is one way that is what the textbook says and you might have heard also so now the question is why one way why is it that ratio 2 also think say you have 6.05 in your paper but then in real sight if it was 5.99 Five point nine nine divided by three. It is two way. So what if inside you had five point nine nine? Nobody will will even recognize that it is. There is a hardly ten millimeter difference or fifteen millimeter difference. Who will know that if there is a difference? So how can code or the textbook be so specific? And how can you be so specific by saying two? What happens if this is the case? Five point nine nine by three. you designed it as one way thinking that the dimension is 6.05 but in the end you ended up with 5.99 first thing is even if it is one way there is going to be minimal steel in this direction so there is nothing to be worried about but my question is is that right ly by lx is greater than or equal to 2 now how this came up i will just tell you 
it's from the line theory yeah so if you have a slab like this say let us take two way slab now assume that this is two way yeah this is the cracking pattern when you overload it seen and this is the reason that you say that triangular load goes here this trapezium load goes here this trapezial load goes here and this triangular load goes onto this beam so this is the line theory pattern or line theory load distribution which came from that studies done yeah so your slab is cracking like this means it is deflecting like that or distributing the load like that that's the reason it's cracking like that yeah so when it was tested on a two-way slab it was seen that this is the way it is cracking which means the deflections are like that which means the load is distributed like that and when somebody experimented with different ratios it was seen like when if it is L y by L x is more than less than two it is behaving like a two way and we decided okay this is good enough now my question is when that experimentation was done there was a big consideration or assumption that all your four beams are either of same size at least or you also had a simply supported slab which is resting on walls but when you have beams around it there can be differences in reality there might not be a one-way slab eh? and maybe this load distribution is also not 100 percent correct now why am i saying that for making you understand that let me just quickly say about a beam and column yeah so when you have a beam and column like this a frame you are considering the stiffness first place if you are not aware of moment distribution method and all that think that you are modeling it in stad or retabs and then getting the moment values yeah the forces in your beams and columns why are you doing it why can't you take half the load here and half the load here that is not right why because the stiffness plays a role yeah so here when it is a beam or a column junction you are actually calculating the stiffness here and you know that if the column sizes increases the stiffness increases if the column orientation is like this and if the column orientation is like this there is going to be a difference in the moment yeah you will have more moment and you will have less moment here because the stiffness or inertia bd cube by 12 of this column is less bd cube by 12 of this column is more yeah here d is this so here you will have less fixity or less stiffness here you will have more stiffness therefore your moments are more yeah so we want to capture this we want to capture the stiffness in the analysis and that's why you were doing canis method or moment distribution method or you are using stad or it apps for that matter yeah so we are keen on the stiffness that's the reason we are doing that now my question is why are you not doing that for beam uh, slab slab beam junction you are only doing it for column beam junction what is a slab it's also a concrete it's also connected to a beam and to your surprise let me also tell you it is also connected to columns you can in paper say that slab is supported on beam and beam is supported on column it's not like that in this junction when you have a large column like this assume it's even large which is a beam which is a slab which is a column in this junction everything together is a huge huge mass which is very stiff and that's going to interact so you need to calculate or you need to formulate the stiffness between this concrete and the slab or this beam column whatever you call it yeah and you can also have situations where you have a two-way slab and assume that this is a two-way slab and this beam is i am just exaggerating i have spoken about this in many places in my blogs and all that but since this question came to me today i am just writing it again say this is 200 by 200 this is 200 by 200 yeah now what is the problem here because this beam is more stiffer this beam is more stiffer assume that you also have a big shear wall or something here yeah so this is very stiff this particular direction has become very stiff 
Now what will happen? You cannot say that more load will go in the shorter direction. Why? That would have happened provided your stiffness of the support is also either same in all beams or if it was more here. Yeah, so what I am trying to say is in the case of a beam column junction, since the load is going only in one direction, it's going to deflect only in one direction, the beam and the stiffness of the support alone plays a role in the distribution of load. So if the column is like this, this column is likely to get more load and this column is likely to get a little lesser load. Whereas when you have slab, you have two direction interaction which is very difficult to capture in analysis you have to have Canis method or moment distribution method in two direction at the same time. Yeah, Here there are two directions, one point. Second thing is your span, more span means less stiffness. Short span means more stiffness because the deflection will be less because the supports are nearby. Here the supports are far. When the supports are far, the stiffness is less, the deflections will be more. That's one criteria. So the code, when, by, when the code says Ly by Lx more than or equal to 2 and all that, it's only accounting for the stiffness variation because or the deflection because of the span difference. That's why code always says more load in the shorter direction and more uh, less load in the longer direction or the uh, less moment in the longer direction. When you look at the equations, you get like that. That's why that ratio is kept, ignoring the stiffness of the supports. Yeah. So in the case of beam, that two direction doesn't kick in. So here you have a span based stiffness. I'm telling it in a way that you understand, most of you understand. So nearness or farness of support based on that there is a stiffness, whereas the stiffness based on the connectivity or the interaction between slab and the beam or column or whatever wall or whatever is ignored. The code or the E-line theory assumes that all the four beams are of same size. Here I have exaggerated the size in reality you may not get a 600 by 600 beam but I'm just trying to explain it to you. So if this beam and this beam is largely stiff yeah, span point of view, this is less stiff. This direction is less stiff and more load is supposed to go into this particular direction, in the shorter direction, span point of view. But unfortunately or fortunately, here you have a large support. So the interaction between the slab and the support also matters. And in this case, you have very small beam here, which means it is less stiff, even though span point of view, this, this direction is more stiff the support point of view it is less stiff so what do you do here you have large so we can't say that the load will go in the way that e-line theory says it works well when you have reasonably same sizes of beams all around it will not work otherwise same way when you have a shaped slab say you have a slab like this yeah you don't have a beam here what do you do? How will be the load distribution? It becomes complicated. Yeah. Or you have a slab and you have a large cutout there. Now, how will the load go? You don't have any beams near the edges of the supports. How will the load go? One way, one way. How? Will this take some load? How do you know that? So this is where you need to bring in the slab to beam interaction into picture and your E-line theory or triangular load formulation or trapezoidal won't work at all. Yeah. So if you want to do that, model your slabs as shells in ETABs or elements in STAD and then bring in the interaction between beams and slabs into play. Yeah, it will also bring in the interaction between column and slab also into play and you will have a completely different forces in your structure. If you want to experiment that, just model one structure like this, 3 meter by 5 meter, some column size you give 
and model this as membrane check your forces model this as shell thin check your column forces beam moments everything you check slab manual design also you do slab moments from shell thin also you check one exercise second exercises check the beam moments when it is membrane check the beam moments when it is shell thin you will have a uh, huge variance all these are because of the interaction between membrane and i'm sorry uh, between the slab and the beam and columns yeah so there are more things to be explained about this i was just giving you an idea on what it all means in reality for simple structures where you have very regular rectangular kind of shapes for slabs and when the beams are of similar sizes it need not be exactly same around 230 by 450 230 by 600 which you generally see in building structures normal building structures like residentials you are okay to go with membrane which will bring in the e-line theory ly by lx all that will work beautifully it may not be the accurate one but it will give you no problematic result that's all i can tell you and the reason for that no problematic result is the redistribution ability of your structure i have been time and again telling you about that if you have been following my uh, groups and emails and whatsapp group for a long time then you would be knowing that you have one blog here which talks about redistribution and here in the example i have given the redistribution ability of a beam here but then slab also can have that redistribution ability i think that blog is somewhere down so it will be probably this this explains about the redistribution ability of your beam same way slab also have the redistribution ability what i mean is if your steel is less say you wanted eight at short bars has to be eight at 150 but you gave only eight at 250 assume yeah and forget about factor safety for a second assume that it is for unfactored load or moment you wanted this but you are given only this what will happen it will crack it will not fall it will crack and then if you have the steel in the other direction which can take that deflection in that direction which would occur then the slab necessarily need not fall so this is what the redistribution ability is all about only that your slab beam also has to be designed for a slightly more load which generally will be there because of various redundancies various margins that you have so understand redistribution properly understand the stiffness distribution also properly then you will have a good understanding about one way and two way why uh, non-engineered building is standing all these are very closely related so i hope i explained something for you today and thank you very much keep discussing i might not find time every day to discuss similarly but then whenever time allows we can have some discussions in the group thank you so much